Hello and welcome. Pastor John here. Um, today we're going to be looking at the book of Joel, a passage from the book of Joel. And so please open your Bible and uh, turn to Joel chapter 2, verse 28. That's the book of Joel chapter 2, verses 28. And there we read. Then, after doing all those things, I will pour out my Spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. God bless the reading of this word. Pouring out God's Spirit. Pouring out God's Spirit. And that's God's Holy Spirit. So, the background here is that the prophet Joel is revealing God's eternal promise of the Holy Spirit for Judah, uh, Jerusalem, and all nations. In other words, for all people um, who come to Jesus Christ and who are indwelt by the Holy, person and power of the Holy Spirit. And um, just want to say one thing about um, this um, about the speaking of tongues, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of confusion and misunderstanding. Um, I just want to say that the Bible does not teach that somebody has to speak in tongues in order to, um, uh, that, that as, as a sign that they are saved, by uh, that they are have received eternal salvation and that the Holy Spirit is indwelling them. Um, it can be so but it does not have to be so, all right? The Bible doesn't tell us that somebody has to speak in tongues uh, in order that as a sign that they are saved, right? That is false, okay? So just something to, because um, we're dealing here with the, the Holy Spirit and prophesying, but we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail here too. So again, this is God's promise of the Holy Spirit being revealed like a, a, a prophecy then fulfilled after our Lord Jesus Christ's uh, death and resurrection and ascension, um, the Holy Spirit does arrive um, at Pentecost. You can read about it in Acts, the book of Acts chapter 2. So, um, what's going on here is that um, God judges sin, and we need to repent and rely on God's mercy and grace. That's really the bottom line here. And Joel is a prophet in the Old Testament, who God sends to both Judah and Jerusalem, right? Judah, the, um, th there's the divided kingdom. Uh, um, we have uh, the southern kingdom, we have Judah, and we have um, um, Israel uh, in the northern part. In this case, um, it is God specifically sending the prophet to, uh, both to Judah and Jerusalem, so the city of Jerusalem. So the theme here is that God molds us as our loving Father, and um, we are chastised and we are pruned as his children. John 15, uh, verses 1 to 5, um, we read about that uh, last, last sermon, we talked about that briefly, we read God's word, uh, this pruning process <coughs> is something that we all have to go through as believers, and uh, it's uh, not always easy. Um, actually, there are many challenges, but just something uh, to keep in mind here. So the, co the, the topic here is God's promise of the Holy Spirit for all people. For all people. That means everybody who hears the good news, the gospel, um, as we teach and preach Christ crucified, um, that Jesus comes as God in the flesh, uh, dies for our sins on the cross, atones, and is resurrected, and um, so that in and through uh, believing and faith in Him, also something that Jesus Himself does and initiates, uh, we have eternal life. We're saved. So that's that's um, goes along with um, the promise here uh, for um, the Holy Spirit uh, for all people. So what precedes this passage is God's promise of deliverance. Um, in the previous passage, it says, then after doing these things. So, this is really where uh, uh, everything comes together. Um, in verse 28, we have God's awesome promise 
of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, as Jesus promised. Um, Jesus, Je Jesus for, uh, t uh, t prophesies, he tells about his own death and his resurrection, and he promises the Holy Spirit. You can read all about him talking about the Holy Spirit in the Gospel of John 14, chapter 14, 15, and 16. Oh, it's so it's awesome. I encourage you to read that over and over again to remind yourself of the promise of the Holy Spirit. And then at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes um, in Acts chapter 2. And that is, it is available to every Christian, be they, be they speaking in tongues or not, it doesn't matter. Um, Paul writes here in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, But if you are not controlled by your sinful nature, you are controlled by the Spirit, if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. God bless you with His word. Oh, amen. So it's something to be aware of. Uh, you will recognize uh, people by their fruits, not what people say, or flattering words, or ear ticklers. What you know. Anyways, we pray for everybody that people um, teach and preach Christ crucified, and that only they honor God's word, the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. And um, so um, that's all where the Holy Spirit uh, takes heart of us and. Um, leads us into God's Word, and the more we spend time in God's Word and the Bible, the more the Holy Spirit can reveal uh, God's Word, Scripture to us, right? So that's how it all works together. So as I mentioned, we learn a little bit more about the work of the Holy Spirit. So there are spiritual gifts, and um, yeah, there are a lot, of, uh, a lot could be said. We're just going to try to keep it short. Uh, for the sake of reference here, um, as the passage indicates, so sons and daughters will prophesy. What does that mean? That means uh, basically uh, people communicating divine revelation uh, in dreams, visions, etc. And um, old men will dream dreams, young men will see uh, visions. This refers to the work of the Holy Spirit. So regardless of, of, of age, young or old, this is available um, to all believers, and um, salvation is for all who call on God's name. That is all who call on Jesus Christ. So um, remember that prophesying or um, the gifts of the Spirit, spiritual gifts, whatever they do, they are always there. They are never there to glorify, edify a person in and by himself apart from Christ. The spiritual gifts are always used to edify and look after the body of Christ, that is, other fellow believers, whoever they may be. So that's important to understand. It always points to Christ. Uh, the the uh, spiritual gifts always point to Christ and help and edify and build up the body of Christ, that is, the church, never some form of individual thing. Or somebody says, oh, uh, I'm a great prophet or whatever, and then tells people whatever, um, when they do, if they don't preach and teach Christ uh, crucified, it's not from God. So just something to be aware of. All right, so what does it mean for you that God has poured out the Holy Spirit? All right, okay, what does it mean for you that God has poured out the Holy Spirit? How does this apply to you? What does it mean? So it means that um, a repentant heart Bent towards God is fully required to benefit from God's promise of deliverance and the promise of the Holy Spirit. And here, um, so repentance is where it's all at, a heart bent towards Jesus, hearing the good news, the gospel, and responding. Um, again, it's something, something Jesus initiates and then perfects uh, um, as he as he returns then right but it's something that jesus does in and through us so on this note the apostle peter writes in acts chapter 2 verse 37 to 40 peter's words pierced their hearts and they said to him and the other to the other apostles brothers what should we do peter replied each of you 
must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, struggling, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. God bless you in this word. So you see how that all fits together? Right? We're supposed Jesus Christ is um, the one who, um, who calls us, right? We don't call ourselves. Jesus calls us to himself and um, initiates everything, including you know, uh, the softening of our hearts, uh, leading us to repentance, turning away from sin. And uh, so in the book of Acts, we also see a bit more about the Holy Spirit empowering us as Christians to share the gospel, the good news. Um, Peter does it several times in the, um, in the book of Acts. And um, there's a lot of opposition and persecution even there. So in Acts 1 verse 8, we read, this is now Jesus speaking. This is before uh, the Holy Spirit is released on Pentecost. So Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. God bless you in of his word. This is then our call to repent. And so we read in Joel chapter 2, 11 to 14. The Lord is at the head of the calm. He leads them with a shout. This is his mighty army, and they follow his orders. The day of the Lord is awesome, is an awesome, terrible thing. Who can possibly survive? That is what the that is why the Lord says, Turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. Who knows, perhaps he will give you a reprieve, sending you a blessing instead of this curse. Perhaps you will be offer, able to offer grain and wine to the Lord your God as before. So in Christ's words in Luke, if you want to read along here, I encourage you, go to Luke chapter 5 in the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 5, 31 to 32 um, is a, the our call to repentance. Jesus says, Jesus answered them, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. God bless the reading of his word. So may that be an encouragement to us. And um, this is all about the pouring out of God's Holy Spirit. May God bless you and keep you. Amen.